Hi everyone, this is Derek with the Cooper Lighting Toronto Spec Team, back with another tip for the new cooperlighting.com website. Today we're looking at the Configurator, a powerful hidden tool that you probably didn't even realize existed. So let's say you're working on a fixture schedule, and you want to specify your favorite center basket fixture, the Cruise. Since you've already watched the first video, you know to quickly type it into the search bar, select the fixture from the results, and jump straight down to the spec sheet for the 2x2. Once it opens up, you are overwhelmed with the myriad of options available, all with their own notes that you have neither the time nor the desire to read. Well, lucky for you, there's an easier way, and we call it the Configurator. Back on the product page, just below the spec sheets, is a mysterious link that you may have noticed before or even clicked on. Today we are going to learn how this tool works and how it can help you to develop a complete catalog number for any Cooper Lighting product. The Configurator allows you to build a product and automatically limits your choices as you go. Here I have chosen a 2x2 and as a result, certain lumen packages are grayed out. I can then proceed to choose a lens, voltage, color temperature, and driver type. Finally, I can see that based on my selections, the fixture will use only a single driver and once selected, I have green check marks across the board. Further below, there are additional special options which can be used if needed and I can now go back and change any of the previously selected options. Let's say that we have learned that this project requires a 347 volt driver. Looking back at my driver options now, I can see that the 0 to 10 volt is still available, but many other options are now grayed out because of this change. Now we decide we also need to add an integrated Wavelinks wireless sensor to this fixture, down in the sensor dropdown. Once added, I can see that the part number is still valid, but what if I had tried to use the wrong driver? My green checks quickly turn into a glaring red X, letting me know that I need to change it. In this case, I would need to change the driver or remove the sensor, so I will change it back and the check marks return. I can now select this completed part number and copy it into my fixture schedule, ensuring that I will get exactly what I specified for this project. Moving on to the remaining tabs, I can view the available accessory items for the fixture, including mounting kits and programming remotes. And finally, a summary page where I can see all the options selected and print a copy or go back and make additional changes as needed. So at this point, you're probably thinking, hey, that's pretty good, but I probably could have figured that out with just the spec sheet, and you might be right. And since you've subscribed to this channel, you've seen Dale's video on the Coralite SQ4, and know that suspended products is where things can get a little bit trickier. For the next fixture, you browse by brand and make your way down to the SQ4 configurator. This time, you can quickly select your basic parameters until you get down to fixture length, and notice the Run Pattern option, and click on that. A max fixture length option also appears, which allows you to specify the maximum shipping length of the sections. Since this is a retrofit with only a small elevator, you choose an 8 foot maximum length and head back to the top to click on the now visible Configure Pattern tab. Once loaded, you are asked to select a basic pattern to begin, in this case, linear. The preview pane allows you to set the fixture length you need, so you punch in 25 feet and hit preview. Immediately, the length is revised to 24 feet. With only 4, 6, 8, and 12 foot sections available, a 25 foot run is not possible with this fixture, so the tool will round down to the nearest available option. You click Accept, and the fixture is loaded, showing dimensions for both the total fixture and the three 8 foot sections used in this case. You should note here that if you had kept 12 foot max on the previous page, this fixture would instead be shown as two 12 foot sections. From here, you can revise the run by simply clicking and dragging the end of the fixture. The fixture will automatically round down in size to the best available option, and you settle on a 16-foot run. You also need to add an emergency section to this fixture, and as you click through the segments, you can add this to any 4-foot section as needed. Since this is a suspended fixture, the final step is to clarify the mounting and wiring. In the top left corner, you switch from pattern to mounting view, where all available mounting points are shown, and you can click on each to define them. Or to save time, you can click on the validate button, and the tool will automatically add mounting points and wire drops to the fixture, or confirm what you have selected. In this case, the system added a five wire and a three wire drop on either end, three wires each for normal and emergency power, as well as a single zero to 10 volt pair. Now let's say you know the 0 to 10 volt should be with the normal power feed on the right side of the fixture. You simply click that mounting point and change it to 3 wire and validate again. This time the system returns an error message at the bottom, noting that you do not have enough wires based on what you have configured. 
No one's perfect, but you quickly realize the mistake, change the right side wire drop to five wires to include those pesky dimming wires and validate again, this time with a successful result. Moving to the summary page, you will see a completed part number as well as a breakdown of the individual pieces and in most cases, the layout drawing you just completed. Feel free to go back and make changes or additional run lengths, or you can move on to a different fixture by clicking on the brand at the top of the page. This will bring you to the main page of the configurator where you can filter through product images to find and configure additional fixtures. The configurator is available for a wide variety of fixtures, but not the entire Cooper Lighting catalog. This is also a good time to mention that custom configurations are available, so if the system says you can't do something that you need, please contact your spec rep for details. Before we go, let's look at one final example. As a reward for sticking with me, I will speed this one up. In this case, I need a recessed slot fixture, but I just can't recall the name of that product line. I do a quick search and immediately remember the Define family, available in 2, 3, 4, or 5 inch and fully configurable down to the nearest inch. Launching the configurator, I very quickly select my options for a Define 3 recessed in a drywall ceiling with a flush lens and a silver finish. When I go to configure the pattern this time, there are a lot more default options to choose from. But in this case, I will opt for a simple rectangle with outside dimensions of 20 feet by 16 feet. Beyond just the ability to create shapes, with the defined configurator, I'm able to adjust the dimensions and they will correct only to the nearest inch. I can click down on any section to add the EM option as before, and since this is a recessed fixture, there is no need to configure the mounting points. Quickly validating the pattern, I can see that it is successful and can move on to the summary page with each of the runs, including the corner pieces, broken out for me. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps when specifying all your favorite Cooper Lighting products on your next project. If you run into any problems, reach out to one of these fine gentlemen and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks.